Michigan's adventures regarded by many to be the worst park in the Cedar Fair chain. But is that a fair perception for this Muskegon, Michigan park? While it may be a lower tier Cedar Fair park, that doesn't mean it's a bad park. In this video, I will explain why Michigan's Adventure is still a decent park worth visiting. Before visiting Michigan's Adventure, I think you need to set your expectations. Cedar Fair parks are known for their cleanliness, solid operations, and great roller coasters. Michigan's Adventure has the looks. I love the lake in the center of the park, and it creates several gorgeous vantage points as you make your way around the park. And then you have a perimeter of trees around the edge of the park. Then the rides all look good too. Most rides sport fresh coats of paint, and the midways are immaculately clean. While Michigan's Adventure may not get much in terms of new additions, the park is at least well kept. There are two downsides with the overall appearance of this park though both of which are common for Cedar Fair parks. One, the park has barely any theming, but as I said, that's the norm for Cedar Fair parks. Really, the only themed area in the park is the new for 2021 Camp Snoopy area, which had a relaxing, woodsy feel to it. I can look past the lack of theming as the park as a whole looks nice. Two, the park has a severe lack of shade. This one is harder to forgive because you can get burnt to a crisp here if you are not careful. This isn't just an issue in the midways either. Many rides have completely unshaded queue lines that are miserable on hot summer days. One other thing with this park is the overall layout. While it may look like the park forms a loop around the lake, the layout is essentially a giant horseshoe with two dead ends, one by Shivering Timbers and one by Thunderhawk. There is a train ride that will take you between these two areas, but I really wish there was a pathway as well. It would really help the flow of guests because the midway along the water park can become a choke point on a busy summer day. The operations of Michigan's Adventure are not as good as the other Cedar Fair parks, unfortunately. Because of the park's location, staffing is a major issue, so it's not uncommon to find several rides, shops, or food stands closed. If you want to mitigate this issue, your best bet is to visit on a weekend. That is what I did in both 2017 and 2021. Just know you'll have to deal with larger crowds on the weekends. Dispatches are great on Shivering Timbers, the park's signature wooden roller coaster. That is the one ride in the park that will consistently run two trains and also has an efficient crew. It is easily the park's best ride, yet usually is one of the shortest waits of all the roller coasters. 2021 was the exception though, as Shivering Timbers only had one train for most of the season due to an accident. But based on the park's history, I see no reason why consistent two train operations, even on quiet weekdays, won't continue in the future. Thunderhawk can operate with two trains in busier days, and then the only other coaster that consistently operates with multiple vehicles is the Mad Mouse, but that ride stacks about a half dozen trains at once, so it might as well be operating with one. Everything else can only run just one train, and they don't always have the fastest dispatches either. That makes the throughputs of the other coasters less than ideal on busy days, particularly Wolverine Wildcat. If you want to avoid the worst lines, I strongly recommend starting your visit with Mad Mouse. That is almost always the worst line in the park. Then you should hit Wolverine Wildcat. Both these rides can have half hour waits in quiet days, and lines can approach an hour in busy days. The other coasters will have much more manageable waits. But if crowds are an issue, you can purchase a fast lane skip the line pass, valid for all the dry park's major rides and attractions. One other issue I noticed was how Michigan's Adventure handles breakdowns. Most parks will allow guests to remain in line if a ride is a short delay. Michigan's Adventure, at least in my 2021 visit, would clear out the entire queue line each time, no matter how minor the breakdown was. This happened to me both on Shivering Timbers and Wolverine Wildcat. Now it would make sense to clear out the whole queue line if there's a major safety issue or an extended delay, but both rides were down for just 5 to 10 minutes. Wolverine Wildcat was down for something as minor as the magnet on the exit gate not working. The biggest mark against Michigan's Adventure is the ride lineup, and it's all about perspective. If you go in expecting the deep coaster lineup you see at most big budget chain parks, you will be sorely disappointed. Shivering Timbers is one of the best coasters in the world but the rest of the coaster lineup is just okay. However, if you compare Michigan's Adventure to most independent parks, its lineup suddenly looks much more favorable. I do sympathize for the locals though. 
It is a major bummer that Cedar Fair does not invest in this park more. All but one of the park's roller coasters were built before Cedar Fair took over in 2001. Cedar Fair would regularly add new rides to the park in the first decade owning the park, but over the past decade, Michigan's Adventure has only received the aforementioned Camp Snoopy area and the Lakeside Gliders Flying Scooters. Even by independent park standards, that has a really severe lack of investments. However, the lack of new additions is deliberate by Cedar Fair, and it goes back to the chain's vision for the park. There was an interview with park president Camille Jordan Mark a few years ago, where she clarified that Michigan's Adventure has a set strategy. As she said, by the time kids are in their teens and early 20s, they want to go to Cedar Point for the biggest, the tallest, the fastest rides. In contrast, Michigan's Adventure is a great starting park for people with little ones. Cedar Point is within a driving range of Michigan's Adventure, so by focusing on that younger demographic, the stagnant ride lineup of Michigan's Adventure suddenly becomes less of an issue for their crowd. As kids grow up with the park, more rides open up to them each year, and the cycle repeats with new kids each year. This is why I think Camp Snoopy was an excellent investment for the park. Previously, Michigan's Adventure just had small clusters of kids areas towards the front of the park, many of which had old or dated attractions. You still have a few sections like this, but the Camp Snoopy area provide a far larger area for kids to spend most of their day. The area looks fresh and has several attractions that kids can comfortably enjoy with their parents, such as the Woodstock Express Junior Coaster. If you're a coaster enthusiast wondering, yes, adults can ride this coaster without any issues or a child if you want the credit. Then the park has two family coasters. Zack Zoomer is a rare junior wooden coaster. It is a smooth ride that is a great transitional coaster for kids wanting something more extreme than Woodstock Express. Mad Mouse is actually my second favorite ride at the park, which is surprising given it's a wild mouse coaster. But this is one of four arrow wild mice coasters ever built, and quite simply, it's one of the best wild mice coasters in the world. It is smooth, the hairpin turns deliver strong laterals, and the drops in the second half deliver shockingly good airtime for a coaster like this. One of the bunny hills even offered a pop of ejector airtime. Really the only flaw with this ride is that dismal throughput. The park has four larger coasters, two invert riders, corkscrews a generic arrow corkscrew. The first drop delivers a good pop of airtime in the back, and the ride isn't too rough either. The ride has a really basic layout, but the short duration makes it a great first coaster for younger guests with inversions. Thunderhawk was relocated from Geauga Lake, and many consider it one of the smoothest SLCs. However, I still find it rough. The bulky over-the-shoulder restraints make headbanging inevitable, which makes it hard to appreciate the otherwise intense and fast-paced layout. Last but not least, you have the two larger wooden roller coasters. Wolverine Wildcat was the original coaster built by the Din Corporation. The layout has a lot of similarities to Phoenix at Knobles, but it rides nothing like that PTC masterpiece. Wolverine Wildcat has a few weak spots of airtime peppered throughout its layout. Just make sure to avoid this ride in a wheel seat. The front two seats in a car are tolerable, but the back seat in any car will result in a very shaky and uncomfortable experience. I have a separate review that goes into more detail on this coaster. As I mentioned earlier, Shivering Timbers is the unquestioned star of the park. This custom coaster's international creation is one of the best wooden coasters ever. It looks like a hyper coaster with its towering camelbacks and endless series of airtime hills. It makes one heck of an impression as you drive into the parking lot. The biggest strength of Shivering Timbers is its length. It has nearly one mile of track and roughly 90 seconds of prime ride time. Few coasters offer as much prime ride time as Shivering Timbers, especially of this quality. Shivering Timbers is an airtime machine start to finish. And then you also have some strong laterals on the far turnaround and helix finale for good measure. This ride hasn't gotten as much attention in recent years, but the ride is running smoothly and I'll go into more detail why this is such a special ride in a separate review. So while the coaster lineup is not super deep on quality for a seasoned coaster enthusiast, it does cover a lot of different genres and thrill levels for the average guest. In terms of flat rides, Michigan's Adventure has an older lineup of spinning and pendulum rides. They're almost always walk-ons, 
but I do wish the park had some more modern flat rides, such as a drop tower or a frisbee to round out the lineup. If you're looking for dark rides, you are out of luck at Michigan's Adventure. So if thunderstorms are in the forecast, this probably isn't the best park to visit. Every single attraction is outdoors except for the Dodge and bumper cars. Michigan's Adventure does have a solid lineup of water rides though. I have never been able to ride Logger's Run as it has been closed in both my visits, but it looks like an average arrow log flume. Adventure Falls is your standard Hopkins shoot the shoot ride that will generate a massive, soaking wave. Grand Rapids is a cleverly named River Rapids ride that is probably the park's best water ride. It is well landscaped, and while the rapids are really weak, there are two waterfalls that will soak you to the bone, including one that is completely unavoidable for everyone. And unlike most parks, Michigan's Adventure actually allows guests to remove their shoes, which was much appreciated given the soaking. Then there are three other water rides I'm surprised still exist at a park like this. You have both bumper boats and swan boats that use the central lake. And then you have the Hydro Blaster wet dry water slide in the amusement section. The latter is particularly shocking because of the sizable wild water adventure water park that's attached to Michigan's Adventure. I think this water park may be more popular than the dry park on most summer days. This is where most of the crowds will go, and this is probably where you'll see most of the lines at this park. There may not be any standout slides compared to other water parks, but the slide lineup is deep and has something for everyone. Moving on to the food, I have never gotten anything to eat at this park, but the offerings look like your generic pizza, burgers, and chicken tenders. Cedar Fair has improved their food offerings across their other parks with popular local chains and new venues, so I'm hoping something similar happens to Michigan's Adventure in time because it really needs it. So do I recommend visiting this park? If you live in Michigan, absolutely. It really is the only major amusement park in that state. Michigan's Adventure has something for everyone, kids, families, and thrill seekers. There are better parks in the surrounding states though but Shivering Timbers alone makes this a park worth visiting, and I could spend all day riding this coaster. In fact, I did spend almost all of my 2021 visit riding Shivering Timbers. The biggest risk if you go to visit this park is if Shivering Timbers is closed, because the other coasters and rides are just okay. This is really one of those parks that if the major ride is closed, it can significantly change how your day goes. Fortunately, Shivering Timbers is quite reliable so odds are very much in your favor that it will open and stay open for most of the day. Michigan's Adventure's location on the western coast of Michigan means it will almost always be a sizable detour on a coaster road trip, but it is within driving range of other more frequently visited parks. Michigan's Adventure is roughly four hours from Six Flags Great America, Indiana Beach, and Cedar Point. The extra miles are well worth it though once you get on Shivering Timbers, and you also have the gorgeous Silver Lake Sand Dunes roughly a half hour north of the park that are also worth checking out. While this is probably the worst Cedar Fair Park outside Gilroy Gardens, Michigan's Adventure is still an enjoyable park for what it is. Shivering Timbers is the star, but the rest of the park is decent. What are your thoughts on Michigan's Adventure? Have you been there? I would love to hear your thoughts about this park down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you can start subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.